Howdy folks, Frankie Day, back again on YouTube. This evening YouTube, I have another collection of builds of my past, featuring my F2A Brewster Buffalo, in a scale of 124. Now folks, this is a sketch built, again, using the late great Paul Matz volume number one aircraft drawings. Uh, volume number one publication has nothing but aircraft carrier shipboard aircraft all the way from 1930s up to the 40s. Uh, the original scale of this airplane was, was in the printing was 148 scale. I had the plans duplicated up to 124 scale given a bigger model. The wingspan of this, is, of this airplane is 18 inches opposed 148 scale which is 7 and a quarter inches. It's all built entirely out of paper, folks. The only thing that's not made out of paper in this airplane is the pilot. And the pilot in this airplane is a G.I. Joe doll. My little youngest daughter, Megan, she used to collect G.I. Joe dolls. That's kind of unorthodox and becoming of a little girl collecting G.I. Joe figurines. But they were very popular back in, the, back in the early 90s and the 80s. Mostly in the 80s. And... Uh, so she had these, these back in the 80s she had. And uh, one day I looked at one of these pilots. Matter of fact, I stepped on this guy one time by accident. I used to take her her figurines away from her because she's a hit, play in the floor all the time and leave them laying around. And an old dad mom has to get up and, and rumble around the house to get somewhere. And you step on one of these things and you're stalking feet. You'll yell to the overhead. And I kid you not. So one time I broke her from these these little figurines and her dolls stuff. I used to take them take them to work with me. Well, I get when I was out of the service, and uh, she was uh, sticking from the playing with her toys until she learned how to to uh, take care of her things and put them away when it's done. So as she got older, she grew away from them. So she said, "Dad, you've been wanting this for a long time." I said, "Yeah, let me have him. I got a lot, a lot of use him, so I'll put it in my spare parts box." And usually he was in a green and yellow color, some kind of crazy color. But he's painted as a 1930s naval air, air, air aviator. And he fits very nicely inside the, the Booster Buffalo. <clears throat> as of before I proceed any further on the kit, without further ado, I'll go ahead and explain the history of this airplane. Now back in the uh, the gallant golden age of the of the nifty 1930s, when the aviation was starting to rise at the peak, there were a lot more designs, folks. that was on the drawing board. You got to realize every time they design one airplane, and it's it's pressed into service, you got another one that it's a successor, and you always got a lot of plans out there on, on the drawing board, and uh, the airplanes are being re uh, released as these airplanes have become obsolete. Now, the, uh, the Brewster F-2A uh, Buffalo was the first monocue and first monoplane shipboard fighter that the Navy enlisted. This airplane was obsolete by 1940 because, was, like I said before, there's other designs out there that's coming into view, so there's no need for this. The F-2A uh, Buffalo was released to the Lindley's program. The English used them. They were stationed in Burma and India. And also, I believe the Czechoslovakians, they used them too during the Second World War. So they weren't too obsolete for other countries that had great need for them. Even the Polish, they used them a lot too as well. And the Canadians, they were, they were quite uh, very useful. Matter of fact, they used these in the South Pacific as late as, uh, as, late as 1943, folks. I kid you not. The Booster Buffalo was a very fast airplane. The landing gears you tracked them were by crank system. They had no hydraulics and crank systems. Uh, with that stick right there, going back to the plane again, I want to get to uh, a, a, a point ahead. Uh, the, the, the cockpit's made out of pa uh, packing tape, and all the lines on there is used to buy a drafting pencil and a metal rule. The cowling and the stinner on the prop is made out of a series of w rings using cardstock. There's a G.I. Joe uh, pilot right there, folks. He's converted. And uh, I, I painted them up, and the tires right there, as you see, as they retract inside the wells. The exhaust pipe is right there in front of the leading edge of the wing. I just take the lazy season, give her a little walk around. We'll go to the port side of the aircraft, it's identical. 
Uh, then the cylinders are made out of a series of discs using, again, my punch set I use, which gives various diameters of discs as you punch them out. And the uh, Jaffa's pencil is very handy with this. This airplane is made out of vanilla cardstock. And again, you can see the pilot in there. And uh, I got a little bit of wash out in that wing tip. The airplane's getting old, folks. It's, and uh, stand back here, you're a little surprise for you right here. Just a pair of scales. As you zoom in right here, there's that pesky uh, 132nd scale naval pilot right there. That shows you how big his airplane is compared to that's 132nd scale, folks. That's 132nd scale. That shows you how big this model is. He's about wee high to a grasshopper. Very well dwarfed compared to this. Look at that big pilot right there. Ah, oh, pilot right there is at least 15 feet tall. You can put him right next to him, standing on two feet. And some Alice G.I. Joe dolls look like they're pretty much in scale. And you see the draft was pencil my yellow. I use felt tip markers to color in the cardstock. Using a draftsman pencil, and I went in and drew in the uh, control surfaces on there. All the panel lines were again were used uh, by using draftsman pencil. But like I say, it wouldn't for all the paneling lines, a lot of detail put into it. This model looked like it, it would look like nothing. It'd be nothing but a shell of an airplane. And uh, there's the, the, the gun sights made out of rolled tubing. The decals are made from came from the Gestapo uh, the Gestapo decal sheet, which is now micro scale. The cowling ring, which is the, this is the group commander's aircraft, cuts of the uh, carrier USS Saratoga, and uh, the green band on the on the uh, cowling right there, which signifies the group commander, was also done with a felt tip marker. And the plane was glossed using aero gloss dope, 50% nitrate and 50% nitrate. And uh, I'm getting to see now that a lot of, a lot of uh, aero gloss dopes are not on, on the hobby shop shelves anymore because it's it's being replaced by other methods of, uh, of, of getting things done. So a lot of old school uh, balsam wood uh, builders, uh, they have to have difficult time finding your gloss dope, butrate dope. So I guess the best place to find butrate dope is probably go to an airport somewhere. Whether they're restoring airplanes. I'm quite certain you find it much there. But uh, that's obsolete method, folks. So right now, the successor to air gloss dope is crime on clear. Crime on clear, folks, I cannot stress anymore how much this stuff is, how great it is on plastic cardstock or wood, any finished product. This stuff is called magic in a can. It'll take something old and turn it into new real fast. Well, there's uh, Lord George right there giving me a stamp of approval. And uh, we'll, uh, I'll go ahead and close the video. Okay, folks, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in on this uh, group of the, uh, this build of the past I've done of the F2A Brewster Buffalo. Uh, right to this, I have a new uh, a new series of projects that need to be finished. It's coming up, so I'm gonna uh, be able to hear. I'll be able to make another video, make a video of projects that need to be finished up. And uh, so when that when that's finished up, I'll go to the next video and make another one. So anyway, folks, uh, just so stay in tune for that, and I should have an update on, on uh, Speedy's 197s. Uh, group bill of 1960 jet aircraft and uh, prop driven aircraft. That'll be coming up uh, later on this evening, too. So, we're after this video, folks, so stay tuned for uh, finished up projects. They'll be finished. And uh, we'll go for that, and uh, once, I, once I finish that, I'll, I'll start another video on another one. It needs to be done. So, I got a lot of calling on me. need to be done. So, since I got a lot of snow coming in, I got nothing better to do than sit here and build models, folks. All right, boys, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. May God bless and happy modeling. I'd like to wish everybody out there have a happy, very Merry Christmas. And I hope Santa uh, brings you guys a lot of plastic. And I know I'm getting a lot of plastic this year. And uh, you guys all take care, fellas. May God bless. And we'll catch you on the next video. And uh, happy modeling. And please subscribe. And see you later, boys. Take care, man.